in order to worship, to commune, and to connect with our living God. We learned today, Lord, of the parable of the sower during our Sabbath school. And we pray, Lord, that our hearts will be made ready to receive your truth. We pray, Lord, that during this church service, we will have protection from the evil one, that he will not be able to come and snatch the truths that you dispense to us today. We pray, Lord, that as the truths of this worship service fall upon our hearts, that they would take deep root in us and that we in turn will take deep root in you. Mm -hmm. That no matter what may come, no matter what trials we may face, Mm -hmm. no matter what tribulations may present themselves, Mm -hmm. we will never be uprooted from you. Mm -hmm. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your love and that your grace will be manifested today. That we will see how great you are that you will abide in us and we will abide in you. Mm -hmm. And that our love for you will grow more and more to match your infinite love for us. This we pray in your son's beloved name. Amen. Amen. I ask the congregation to please remain standing as the elder Andre leads us out in hymn 86, How Great Thou Art, that is a change from the bulletin, but we will be singing hymn 86, How great thou art. God. Oh, mm-hmm. 
Let us continue praising the Lord now with your tithes and offerings. You know the Lord, he will never forsake you. Amen. You can trust him if your eyes close. He will take care of you. We can bring the money that belongs to him. We can trust him with all our hearts. If you give him your money, he will give you the money to, back to you. So you don't need to worry about him. If you give the money to him, to his cause, he will take care of you. Amen. There's nothing to worry, brothers and sisters. We just have to bring our money and put it for his cause. They're running, the time is running out. We just need to trust God now. He's gonna give you the money. Malachi is three. Malachi is three ten. You know, we have to make sure that the people are receiving the seed. And this is one of the ways that we can do that. If you bring your money to the cause of God. Let's, let's just read one more time. Bring all tiles into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Praise the Lord. Brother Andres is going to pass by you. The Lord will take care of you.
Tony. Stand for the doxology. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love. What a wonderful love, Father, you have for us. We thank you so much, Father, for everything that you do for us, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. And every day, every day, every minute, you bless us, bless us with life. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We are coming here now, Father, to, to put the, on this basket the offerings, the money. Yes, Father, the money that needs to go to buy Bibles, to go to help somebody. Yes, Father. That the money, we pray, that goes and reach somebody today. We pray, Father, we pray. Praise be to God. Praise be to your name, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for everything. We are nothing, Jesus. We are nothing without you. We can do nothing without you, Jesus. And we praise your name today. Because we have opportunity to participate in this program to saving souls. Saving souls for your kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. We ask you a blessing upon each one of you, each one of us. Help us to understand the mission that we have today. We thank you. We ask you for the blessing of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. It is wonderful that we have already expressed our trust in God by giving him our monetary uh, funds. We are trusting that he will take care of us. We are trusting that he will use them for his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And now we are going to continue showing our trust in the Lord by offering him our praises and by bringing to him our prayers. I will begin with the common prayer, but it's desperately needed now. We need to pray, of course, for our country. It is turbulent times, no matter where you are in the political spectrum. I think we all can agree that things are not the way God would want them to be. Whether you look at uh, the way we berate candidates or assassination attempts and the way we as a country look at each other, sometimes as if we're the enemy. But let's remember, we are not each other's enemies. We are each other's brothers and sisters, especially in Jesus. Jesus is the one who unites us. Jesus wasn't Republican. Jesus wasn't Democrat. Jesus was Jesus. And that's what he asked us to be, is to follow his teachings and to be Christian. So I want to pray that in these turbulent times as elections are now coming again, you know, it happens every four years, but boy, brother, it feels like it's happening a lot, a lot sooner with the hostilities happening. Let's remember that we need to be united as God's family, that we are united in Jesus, and that God will continue to bless America as we pray for revival. That's my prayer today. Any other prayer requests or praises this morning? Karen, go ahead. I have a couple of requests. Yes. Uh, the first one is my mom's sister who is coming up to the second holy. And I don't know if she'll be able to do it on time. Yes. Uh, she's still in her state of coma. Yes. Well, we'll pray for condolences for the family and God's grace to be with them as they mourn. Absolutely. Any other prayer requests or praises? Yes, Mary. For my brother. For your brother. Anything in specific or God knows? God knows. Isn't that wonderful that God knows your needs? You only need to begin saying the name and God knows. You know, Ellen White says that the moment you decide you want to pray, you don't need to pray yet. 
You just decide you want to pray. God's grace is already flowing out to you to care for you. God knows, and the moment your heart desires, he shall answer. Matthew, my son, you have a prayer request or a praise? Okay. Is it that I'm an awesome father? Okay. He has a praise. There's a church member who invited them over to use the pool weeks ago. He's gone every week, and he is already praying for the upcoming week that he can go again and is praising the Lord that he gets to go again. And he is praying that Daddy will take his day off and go with them to the pool rather than staying home and relaxing. I am praying opposite. We will see who God listens to in the end. Any other prayer requests or praises? Yes, Mimi. Okay. 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 I'm sorry to hear that it's getting worse, but we will continue to pray for healing and also pray for strength and courage during this very terrifying time. Any other prayer requests or praises? Yes, go ahead, Andre. Prayer request is for August 24th. Mm hmm. Opening the door for us to go to distribute 300 books with great controversy. Excellent. Uh, and we pray that God is going to use us. That's right. For His honor and glory. And that the books find the right people yes. whose hearts are ready to hear Amen. and they desire to read what's being Amen. handed to them. Amen. Absolutely. Last call. Any other prayer requests or praises? Okay. Not seeing any, I invite the congregation to please kneel. And let us begin our time of prayer by singing hymn number 671 as we come to you in prayer. Let us kneel together. full of mercy and abounding in love. Amen. We gladly come before you, O Lord, to bring to you our praises and our prayers. Lord, if we could just see all that you do for us each and every day, there would not be enough time in our day to give you the thanks that you deserve. And so, Father, even in our weakness, we lift you up. We declare that you are good, we praise you for satisfying our hearts with good things. And we declare to all that you are worthy of worship, that you indeed, your name, should be high and lifted up. Father, as we remind ourselves of your grace, we bring to you our sins today, for they are many. We ask, Lord, that you would forgive them on this great day of communion. Many of us here today, Lord, maybe we feel far from you. Maybe we do not feel right with you. Maybe you have been convicting us of certain things, and, and maybe we have not yet made those right to be right with you. I ask, Lord, that you speak to us now your love that you remind us of your forgiveness, that if we repent and confess our sins, you are faithful and you are just to forgive those sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, if we do not feel in harmony with you right now, we need not remain in that state a moment longer. Right here, Right now, 
as we hear your voice, we can say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And the moment we do so, instantly, we pass from death to life, and we are covered by the perfect life of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. May we walk in that assurance now. Lord, we are your children, and you desire to give good gifts to your children. And so we ask for those good gifts now for our brothers, as Mary said, for our children, our spouses, our parents, for healing, Lord, healing from cancer, healing with upcoming surgeries. Lord, the needs that we could go are, well, again, as if we could praise you all day, our needs could take up all day too. But Lord, you know what we need before we even ask. And even now you're telling the angels, go, go, answer their requests. And so, Father, we thank you that even now before we finish praying, you are moving heaven and earth to care for our needs. And Lord, I give a special prayer today. My son Matthew mentioned the pool. I want to ask, Lord, that you would fill our hearts with happiness over the simple things. This world has so much that can take away our joy, so much that can make us look down the earth. But no, I say, remind us of the joy of a bird chirping, of a butterfly landing, of the smile on the face of those we love. Lift our eyes from this earth, Father. Point them to heaven that we would see heaven in all of its glory and that you would redefine this world, that in this world we would also find joy. Father, on behalf of the congregation, I just say we love you. And we are so grateful that you are in our lives. And we are so thankful that you sent your Son to live for us and die for us, that we might live with you forever in heaven. May that truth never grow old, and may you always touch a chord in our hearts. This we pray in the name of Jesus the Son and the Christ. Amen. Amen. Our prayer, O Lord, I would like to invite our dear sister Mimi to come forward at this time as she reads to us from the Bible, from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 29 through 34. And I ask that you would allow the words that she speaks and reads today to be life for you. These are the very words of God for you. Let us hear them for what they are. Mimi, please come. Good morning. Happy Sabbath Good to each one. Let's praise, praise the Lord because today we had the freedom to be here. Amen. Uh, let's read the word of God. John 1, verses 21 to 34. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and say, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I told you about. After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. I did not know him, but I come baptizing with water so that he made me be revealed to Israel. 
And John testified, I saw the Spirit descended, descending from heaven like a dove, and he rested on him. I didn't know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water told me, the one you see the Spirit descending and resting on, he is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Mimi. We'll give Mimi a moment to go sit down so that she can join us as we go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to push this down so it doesn't reverberate, plus so you can see my face. I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse. I'll let you decide. Let's bow our heads now for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I have come to bring to your people a message of love, a message of your forgiveness, and a message of your grace. Lord, this is such an infinitely great message. I don't know how we can contain it in a small eight-minute sermonette. But Lord, what I ask is you take these words on this paper, that you infuse them with life. And as they proceed from your servant's mouth, may they touch the heart of every person here. May they know that you are not just the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, but you are their Lamb, and you take away their sins too. This we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, I was snorkeling off the coast of Florida. It was a wonderful time. I was conducting an evangelistic series down there, speaking for four nights of the week, three days off. And of course, my three days off were either out uh, golfing, well, miniature golfing, because I couldn't golf back then, or, sn or snorkeling, or enjoying time at the beach, or... Another thing I would do is run around the neighborhood for exercise, but there was a problem when I did that. There was a, there was a dog who attacked me every single time. Now, of course, it was a four-pound Yorkie, okay? So, so it was okay, but I'm not going to lie to you. There was a part of me that still want to kind of pop that dog a little bit because every time that dog came out and bit me. But I learned if I would bring treats with me, the dog eventually liked me, but then would chase me until I gave it more treats. So it was kind of a catch-22. Well, I was snorkeling off the coast of Florida, and it was a wonderful time. If you've never had the pleasure of truly snorkeling off the, the coast in the ocean, you are missing out on one of the great pleasures of life. I mean, really, to put those, that, that mask on and put your face under, it really is like you're looking at another world. Well, I was there with a friend of mine named Eli Rojas, and he was snorkeling with me. He's like, well, I'm going to go over that reef and look at sharks. Do you want to come along? I said, no, I love life. Um, you go see the sharks by yourself. That's something you can do. I'm going to stay here. Well, I'm there snorkeling, trying to avoid these sharks, of course. When I saw, I, I don't even know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I just know it was beautiful. I saw this rainbow-like fish that was like scintillating in light. Now, I thought that's only something you saw like in the deep ocean, but apparently not. And this creature was just floating in front of me. I thought it was the most beautiful thing in the world. So I followed this beautiful creature, and it would dart a little bit and dart a little bit, and I would snorkel and follow it. And, and I'm chasing, and I'm having the greatest time when all of a sudden the, the, this little creature just went whoosh, and shot as fast as could be. And I'm like, well, that's weird. Because I was keeping up with this, whatever it was. I'm going to call it a fish, but it wasn't a fish. It was more, more like a squid. It had like this, these tentacles that came out and a little shell, and it kind of just hovered. It was an odd creature. And I was like, well, that thing went fast when all of a sudden I started. I started going fast too because I woof, woof. And I realized the creature wasn't swimming fast. It just got caught in the current. Well, then I realized, uh-oh, I'm caught in the current too. But I, I wasn't afraid because I'm a strong swimmer. I figure, well, I can swim in the 12-foot deep pool. I can do laps. I got this. Well, it became apparent very quickly I did not, in fact, have this. Because as I tried swimming back against the current to get back toward, you know, civilization, 
I'm slowly getting further and further away. And the fear begins to hit me. I am going to die. I'm going to be sent out into the ocean. A shark is going to find me. It is going to eat me. And that's just how my life is going to end. This is what's going to happen. And I was like, okay, now calm down. You know, you can get through this. But I tried harder and harder. And no matter how hard I swam, I was never getting closer to shore. When all of a sudden, I saw another human being. And this human being was dumb enough to put themselves in the current too. And in the current, this human being came to me and I realized very quickly, it was the host, the man I was staying with at this evangelistic series. He had seen that I was in trouble and he knew that he was strong enough to swim against the current. So he put himself in the same situation to come and rescue me. Now, of course, our faces are under the water. We can't talk that well. So it's like, and so I grab him. Like, I knew what he said. He said, Sean, you're doing awesome, but you need a little help. And so I grabbed a hold of his belt, and together we pumped our legs, and it was enough to get us out of the current and back towards shore. Now, his name was Sean, and of course, my name is Sean, so. We get to the, the, the beach, and I say to him, I say, oh, Sean, thank you so much for coming and helping me. He says, Sean, no, no worries. If, if you had left there, you would have died. I'm like, yeah, I know. He's like, that, that's why I came to save you. I'm like, yeah, I know. You don't need to gloat about it. Like, I'm thanking you for coming and taking care of me. You don't got to get arrogant about it. But, of course, he wasn't meaning that. He is like, you know, sometimes, Sean, a lot of people come into the ocean. They get hit by the current. They think they can handle it, but they find it's a situation that they'll be destroyed and they need someone to come and save them. And I was like, you know what, Sean? You just became a sermon illustration. Because when I get back to this evangelistic series, I'm going to tell them the exact same thing. Because what is true for me that day off the coast of Florida is true for all of us in life as well. We have sinned, haven't we? We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we find ourselves in a situation that no matter what we do by our own power, we can't get out of. It does not matter how good you are from this moment on. It does not matter how many of my sermons you listen to. It does not matter how many times you read The Great Controversy or Ellen White. It does not matter how much tofu you gobble down. None of it can rescue you from the death of sin. But there is someone who can, and his name is Jesus. And just like Sean entered the current to save me that day, so Jesus entered our current of this world to meet you where you are at and by his strength bring you to safety. And that is what John the Baptist means when he says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. With that one beautiful sentence, he described to you your salvation. He was saying the Savior has come. He will live the way you should have. He will die what you should have died. And by his wounds, by his strength, he will bring you all the way to salvation. When John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, every Jew there that day would have thought of two things the sacrificial lamb at the temple, and the Passover lamb at the dinner of the Passover. And both of these beautiful symbols teach the exact same lesson. Whenever we sin, something else must die so that we can live. You know, back in the day, uh, the Old Testament, all up to Jesus' time when someone sinned, especially if it was a grievous sin, they were expected to bring a lamb to the temple. That lamb was supposed to die so the sinner may live. And how it would work is you would bring your cute little lamb without spot, without blemish. It was a perfect lamb. And you would bring it to the priest. But here is when something amazing happened. When the sinner brought the lamb, the priest never inspected the sinner. The priest only inspected the lamb. And if the lamb was perfect, 
then the sinner was considered perfect too. Because the lesson that God wanted to teach us was simple. When it comes to salvation, it is not the sinner's perfection that matters. It is the lamb's perfection that matters. And if the lamb is perfect, then the sinner is perfect too. And what the sinner would do is they would lay their hand on the lamb. They would confess their sins. And in God's eyes and in the priest's eyes, what would happen is this, is what we call the great transferal. As the sinner confessed their sins, the sin would leave the sinner and go to the lamb. And the perfection of the lamb would now come upon the sinner. And the lamb would then be marched to the altar to be sacrificed and die the death the sinner deserved so the sinner could live forever. And so it is with you and I. When God goes to look at judgment, he does not look at your perfection. Because in case you don't know, I'm going to break your little world. You ain't perfect. And that's perfectly okay. God does not look at the perfection of the sinner. God looks at the perfection of the lamb. The perfection of the lamb is all that matters. Of course, this is also true of the Passover lamb that undoubtedly came to the mind of the people who heard John say this that day. For those of you who may need a little refresher, the Passover actually came about during the 10th plague against Egypt, right? Just a little history reminder, there was a time when God's people were slaves in the land of Egypt. Now, of course, God had worked for their deliverance. He did so in a mighty way through 10 great plagues who brought this nation to its knees. But unfortunately, they had a stubborn ruler named Pharaoh. And he would, he would always back and forth. He'd say, yes, I'll let your people go. But then the moment the trouble went away, he'd dig his heels in again and again. And again and again, God would have to come and release another plague to give Pharaoh to change his mind. But the worst plague of all was the 10th plague. And this was the plague of the firstborn. This is how God describes that plague in Exodus chapter 12. Here he, uh, he says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute my judgment, for I am the Lord. And how, how then could Israel escape such a terrible fate, knowing that God himself was going to move through this nation and smite every single firstborn? Just, just out of curiosity, any firstborns here? Any oldest in their families raise their hands? Okay, all right. Like, none of you are going to make it, <laughs> right? That's how dangerous it is. Now, I don't know about you, but if I found this, see, I'm a secondborn, so I'm safe. But if I was the firstborn and I heard, hey... An angel of death is going to come kill you tonight. What would my first question be? Uh, how can I not be killed? <laughs> you know, that's, that's all I want to know in that moment. And God tells them how. He says to them that if they take some of the lamb's blood and put it on the two doorposts on the lintel of the house, he says, I will see the blood and I will pass over you and the plague shall not destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. I want you to notice how beautiful this passage is. When God comes to the door, what does he look for? He doesn't ask who's inside. He doesn't ask how many are inside. God doesn't even look inside. The only thing he does is look for the blood on the door. And if the blood of the lamb is there, it is the only thing that matters. And so it is for you and I as well. So often, in this wonderful faith of Adventism, sometimes we make this, the mistake of stepping into legalism, of thinking we need to be perfect to be saved. And, and let's just be honest. I mean, be honest with yourselves. Don't you feel closer to God when you're living holy than when you're making mistakes? And when you're making mistakes, don't you kind of pull away from prayer? 
Don't you pr- pull away from Bible study? Why? Because we feel guilt, don't we? And then that guilt, we, we can't go before God because if we go before God like guilt, God won't love us. That's not true. That's not how God thinks. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes shall not perish but have everlasting life. He loved you before you even thought of him. And here at the Passover, we see the beautiful lesson again when it comes to your salvation. It's not the perfection of the sinner that matters. It's the perfection of the lamb. And if the lamb was perfect, then God calls you perfect too. And that's what we come to celebrate today when we come here to celebrate communion, the fact that you and I are made and declared perfect by the blood of the Lamb. Take a moment and think through some questions I'm gonna ask you. Do you feel right with God today? Do you feel in harmony with Him? Have you sinned and you feel like you're now disjointed? Have you maybe Uh, forsook your devotion life for a while. Homework, work, the kids, the parents, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the spouse, the church have all put things upon you, but as those duties came upon you, you found yourself spending less and less time with God. Listen to me. There are days even I feel separated from God. And here's a secret. There are even some Sabbaths (laughs) when I'm going to (laughs) preach that I feel distant from God. But here's the beautiful thing. You don't have to be that distant from God a moment longer. The moment you are ready, the moment you turn to him, as I said earlier, Ellen White says, the moment your heart says, God, God says, I'm here. And he pours all of his grace back into your life. Sometimes we don't want to come to communion because we just don't feel perfect enough. But here's the truth. This is the perfect time for you to get right with God, to confess those things to him, and to accept him as your Lord and Savior. All you have to do today is take that blood, put it over the door of your heart, And when God looks at you, he won't even look inside. He'll look at the blood of the lamb, and the blood of the lamb is all that will matter. He's inviting you. I see it on your faces. I see the nods. The Spirit's moving on you. He's he's calling you. Be right with me. Come back and love me, for I already love you. Think of the prodigal son. This isn't even a sermon. This is just me talking now because I love God. I gotta, gotta talk about God. Think of the prodigal son. Did the son have to come all the way back to the house before the father went to meet him? Mm-mm, mm-mm. The father was scanning, scanning all the time. And the moment he saw that, that silhouette, the silhouette he knew was his boy, he left everything to meet his son. And if you turn to God right now and you just cry out, Father, he's going to run to you. He's going to come to you. He's already on his way. It's up to you if you want to take the hug he's bringing to you. And so at this day of communion, I counsel you. Take this time to get right with God. Accept him into your heart. Allow his life to cover you. For not only will he call you perfect, but you will enter into the perfect love of God that casts out all fear, and you will know the peace that transcends understanding, and you will come to know him not just as God, not just as Father, but as your dearest and most beloved friend. For Jesus says, if if he abides in you, then you will abide in him. So let us allow God to abide in us today that we would know him as our personal friend and savior, which he always desired to be. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to part from here, we ask that your blessings will be upon us, that your grace will fill us. And we ask, Lord, that we today 
would enter into relationship with you. You are loving and you are good and you are already not just willing, you are eager to accept us if we but come to you today. Help us to accept you, Father, that we would know the peace of being right with you. This we pray in your Son's name. Amen. Uh, Elder Gage, would you be so kind as to give people direction as to what room they are going to be in in order to partake of foot washing? Excellent. And then after the foot washing, we'll come back here for a partaking of the emblems. At this time, you are dismissed. As always, may the Lord bless you and keep you. His face smile upon you and be gracious to you that you would walk in his shalom all of your days. Please go and do foot washing. I'll see you soon back here as we partake of the emblems. You are dismissed. God bless you.